Oh, pulling back the veil. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I've been to the ends of the universe and back, man. Like, it's a, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you get to a point in life where you're like, I can't figure anything else out. And everybody's like, yo, man, check this out. It's called dimethyltryptamine. It's oh. going to, it's going to, it's going to take you somewhere you've never been before. And, um, it's, it's, it's in inward. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you, you, you go, you go to where everything is. Mm. Like it's, it's the place. It's the source. It's all of it. It's everything and nothing at the same time. It's, it's just, it's there, there is no time because time's not real. It's just the passive of everything all at once, everything, everywhere, all at once. And like, just, and once you go, that's it. Like you understand, you, you, you understand how everything works. And yet at the same time, you have no idea how anything works at once. You just understand it's way more complex than yeah. than people can comprehend. Yeah, it's not it's not as easy as you live, you die, you go somewhere or something like yeah. that. It's 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 living, it's breathing. Everything. Everything, everything is, is life. life. Everything, everything is, is dead. dead. Everything, everything is everything. Is everything, everything, everything is nothing, is nothing. all at once. It's good to have you in. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, uh, I've uh, I, I I would like to say uh, also um your episode caught so much traction on my stuff so quick that I was like, this is crazy. Oh, good. Like, I don't know if it's just like when, cause like, I think the the episode that we shot together on mine is probably closest to one of the most real conversations I've had with people. Cause it's like a lot of interviews are interviews. And it's like when me and Tonio and Pogger on, it's different. Cause it's really just three guys talking about dumb shit. But like, I don't know what it was about it. It was like, it, it just, to me, it just seemed like it worked and like it, it fit, it fit in so well. It is, it is the second most downloaded episode I have. Nice. And it is. It was dope. a fun conversation. Oh yeah. It was yeah. Cool. It was great. Yeah. It was great. It was fantastic. Um, Sean's, Sean's has become the, the most popular one that I have for, for obvious reasons, just sure. because it's yeah. heavy as shit. But like his, yeah. uh, his, Sean White? His took off. Sean Carey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sean White, we love ESPN2, Mountain Dew, yeah. No, no, not that nerd. No, not that nerd at all, man. Um, but Sean's was Sean's was great. That is that is the one time where I've got done with an with a show or an episode where I had to like stop and like he left and I, I sat in the dark for like an hour. I was like, I gotta think about life. Yes, yeah, that's, that's sad stuff, man. Yeah. But I mean, he's doing good, man. He's been in the shop fucking every day for the past couple of weeks when he's not going to do a medical stuff and like champing through it like four hours at a time, man. He knows how long you can sit, you know, and he's still cranking out great work, you know. It's oh, fantastic. Good. So nice. it's good awesome. stuff, man. What are you working on these days? <sighs> Too much of everything, man. Um, mostly stand up? Mostly stand up. Uh, 90% stand up. Uh, well, 70% stand up, uh, 20% the podcast, 10% the tattoo shop. Okay. Um, which, you know, the shop, it's not mine, but you know, anytime yeah. I get involved with anything, I like to put an air of, uh, like ownership to it or accountability to it. But, uh, mostly stand up, man. Like mostly uh, I'd, I'd love to this year, you know, with being able to get around more easier again soon, hopefully, um, I'd love to go out more. I want to do more festivals. Um, I've, I've, I've been doing steady blocks of time, man. Like it's most of the time when I go up to Virginia now, it's 30, 35, 40, 45. So. Nice. I'm like, uh, I'm no headliner by any means, uh, for sure. But, uh, I would love to, I'd love to take that next plunge. Uh, somebody was picking around with me the other day and they were like, you probably host more than anybody in the scene at the moment. And I was like, yeah, but that's, that's by necessity. That's, that's what it does. You know, you have to, yeah. because that's just the step for it. That's, that's where I'm at and it's fun. I love it. I have a, I have a ball hosted, man. I bring people up like prize fighters, you know, it's well, it fits I, your personality. Yeah. Yeah. Tony well, does make me feel good when he screams my name like that. I feel <laughs> like I'm going to have a better set than I probably am, but, you know, it makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... He's it, good energy. Yeah. Well, you've got to. It's it's about keeping a show rolling. Like, yeah. it's not... When you're hosting, it's not about you. Right. Like, you can tell funny jokes, but, like, it's not your job to to crush. It's it's your job to maybe... Don't say anything too deci- divisive. Uh say something a little heavy off color, something a little in the middle of the road. Yeah. That way you can set the tone for the room. The other comics know what the crowd's going to bite off of. <clears throat> and then just do your shtick, man. You yeah. know, take your time up front, keep the show rolling, throw a quick punch if you got it in between. Obviously keep the crowd going if you have to. But yeah. like just Yeah, if somebody shits the bed or something, you have to bring the energy back up. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like running the energy back up is one thing, but you know like 
you just got to keep it moving. Or if you have a difficult audience, you know. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. that's the one thing I like about hosting at the places that I host at the most, which, I mean, you know, Gables is different. You know, Greg Gables is his whole own thing. That's uh, it's a big show. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun show. That's fun. We're, we're booking it now. Um, we, we're actually doing a 12 this year, so that'll be fun. Tell them to keep me in mind. Oh, yeah. I want to come back out. Oh, yeah. You're definitely on my list, dude. Yeah. You're, you're definitely, I, have a, I have a whiteboard <laughs> in my kitchen that's just got circles and X's and lines drawn through it, like people that I think would go great off of other people, you know. Um, yeah. I've probably got a pool of now, which with, you know, with with working with Robert and doing stuff with him and then the comics in the scene at Charlotte, the comics in Raleigh, the comics that I know in Virginia now, uh, some of the guys in Tennessee, like uh, I, I sat down the other day and made a list of people that I thought could do it. And before I realized what I was doing, I had probably 120, 130 different comics on a list wow. that I thought I could pull from. And then... The hard part is taking that and narrowing it down to, okay, who do you think can do what? You know, because it's it's different than picking somebody for a guest spot, for a headliner, for a feature spot, you know. But that's, you know, that's all stuff I'm learning from it, you know. And I watch I, I watch anybody who runs a show when I go up and do one. Like, I try to, like, take cues from them. Um, I know now I, I listen to everybody's sets a lot more than I used to. Yeah. I feel like I do. Like, I try to listen for, like, quips or, like, where you've changed it or uh, what you've done to it, if you're still fluid with it, if you're doing the same bit every week for 22 weeks or if you've tweaked it. You know, it's just, like, little things like that I try to notice that I don't think I picked out in the first couple of years when yeah. I was doing it. Um, just, it's cool, to, it's cool to see people's angles on, on bits, too, you know, because that's, I think that's one of the... Um, it's one of the keys to a good stand up is um having a really unique angle the way you you approach the the bit. Oh yeah. You know, and 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 uh, you know with a strong point of view, but um Yeah, I, I love comedy too. I I um I'm careful about whose comedy I watch now though because I don't want to I'm afraid to watch people that have too similar they, they seem like their life experiences maybe cross over a lot with mine. Yeah, and I'm afraid I'm, I don't want to hear their material because I'm afraid it'll it'll affect mine. Or maybe I've got a similar premise that you know I don't I don't want it to be influenced by by their expression of it. So have I'm you ever heard like one of your bits that you're working on told by a comic like in a different way? Oh, yeah, yeah, a couple times. Yeah, I had my first one the other day. <laughs> it stunk. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was a. Uh, that new Stav special where he's talking about, uh, like, uh, if people get, uh, what's that thing they put in your brain, uh, that they put in the monkeys. Uh, oh, like Neuralink? Yeah, Neuralink. Yeah. It was Neuralink, and he was like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't want to get Neuralink because they're going to put my memories behind a paywall or something, and it's <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. I'm going to be reconnecting with my father, and then a Spotify ad comes up, and I was Damn, like, no, man, that's, that's, your so, bit. Yeah. that's so close to what I was trying to do, so yeah, that stunk. <laughs> Stop it's if different, you're listening, but it's, Seth it's basically that bit the first. same bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's awesome that he worked on, you know, you yeah, saw Yeah, it felt kind of cool. I was like, oh, someone like really big is thinking of similar things so that's cool <laughs> and there's so many uh, there's so much crossover anyway. yeah yeah so i just you know i just try not to like i watched stop us because we're so different you know yeah, yeah but yeah. that is a bit that any of us could have came up with yeah and that's like that's really something i would be likely to think of too yeah i love t science and technology so much but um but I've, I've yeah i've seen a couple of those uh but it is it is it did make me feel good it's like oh well i'm you know, writing stuff that's similar to what these guys have written. Yeah. So that's that's positive. You know. That's true. Stavi's hilarious, man. Uh, yeah. It, it took me a while to like like it's I don't I don't watch as much as I used to, but I try to I try to watch about an hour a week. Uh whether it be like somebody special or like uh like an amalgamation of stuff or like uh people getting up. I try to I try to watch an hour a week. I try to listen to about twenty minutes a day of something comedy related, whether it be like old comedy albums or like somebody's podcast. Um, it, for some odd reason, it just keeps my head fluid. Yeah. I watch some comedy podcasts, but yeah. Oh yeah. I watch, those. uh, I mean, I, I watch, I watch Joe, I watch Shane's, uh, I watch two bears, uh, I watch YMH, uh, and a bunch of others, bad friends just yeah. because those I, are all good ones. Yeah. Well, I don't think Bobby Lee gets enough credit for any of the stuff he does like that. That is an insane human 
that he's, is hilarious. That should be way more known than he is. He's a silly guy, dude. Yeah. He's he's bananas. His stories are nuts. It makes me laugh every time, but they're crazy, like a hundred percent crazy. Yeah, I've been uh, been writing a lot, so trying to trying to really build my set and and uh, tighten my material up and really get it to a. I want to take it to the next level. Oh know? yeah. So, well, I was uh, I was actually talking about you uh, earlier um, today. Ironically, uh, I was talking with uh, some of the guys at the shop, and I was like, uh, I brought up, I was like, yeah, you know, like guys like Neil Hoover, and then uh, Sam, one of the guys, he'll come or he would come up with Sean a lot. He was like, who's Neil? And I was like, you know, Neil, like the really like buff dude, you know, and everything. He was like, which one? I was like, the handsome guy. And he's like, I, I don't know which one was that. I was like. The one with the thing with the leg. And he was like, oh, yeah, that dude. I've seen that dude. And I was like, yeah, of course. That's the one. That's like, I, tr- I try to bring that up last because yeah, that, yeah. that shouldn't be the footnote. But I oh, was. That's an easy one for you. Yeah. If but, you were given directions, it'd be the, the amputated leg would, the prosthetic leg would come up first. Yeah. 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 But uh, I, I was, because uh, I was talking about it and I was like, um, you know, uh, I was trying to explain like the process and I was like, if I could talk about somebody that I thought got the process the quickest, it would probably be Neil. And he was like, what do you mean? It was like, well, he told me the way he wrote one time and I thought that was crazy. Like just, you know, how writing for you worked, how it was like, you'd, you'd work it out and then you'd write it and then you'd keep doing your stuff. But then I was like watching it progress into what it is now is insane because we were right behind each other. Yeah. But it's know? what we all do. I mean, it's, it's really... I mean, there's we all have our own way of writing, yeah, and expressing ourselves. But there's also a lot of crossover in it too. There's a lot of similarities between all comedy. Oh yeah, this, you know, structurally, it's just it's a setup of punch and tags, and there's just more creative ways to get there. And and as and and as you get further into it, just like with anything else, you start to peel back layers and find new things. And and it's it's fun. Like for me. Um, it's like there's a music too for me, which you're you're a musician, so you know. But um, it seems like right when I'm starting to learn something new, it gets really hard, and I get I almost feel depressed. Like, a, but I know what's happening. It just hurts. It's like a it's God, like a growing. I suck at this. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like a growing. And so when I start feeling like I really suck, like I start really beating myself up, I know that I'm re- getting ready to to have a new understanding about something in the craft. You know, I'm about to expand. Oh, yeah. You know, so, you know, like now if I have like a marble sized view of the map, maybe I'm going to have a quarter sized view of the map, you know, so it's. Oh, I still think I'm, I still think I'm on the pencil tip, man. That's probably there, but yeah. Like I, I just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been weird, but like this is, this has definitely been the, I've definitely worked more this year than I have any other year doing it. Um, but I've felt more comfortable this year. Yeah, than, I have too, yeah. Than I have for sure. Like it's, it's way more fluid. I don't feel like I have to have like a, like. Year two, I was like, yo, this has to be planned. I have to do this. I have to say this. If I don't hit these notes, this joke doesn't work. And then like, um, fuck, what was it? I think it was, uh, I think it was the Lisa Curry show. Uh, I, I guess spotted on that one. And like, uh, I had a, I had a minute left. And like, I was like, well, I got to put something here. I can't just walk. Well, I could just walk off. But I wanted to get like one more laugh out of there because I'm greedy for no reason. And uh, I did the uh, I did the uh, the the cat joke, uh, which and I did it like that. I cut everything out of it. And the thing that bothers me the most about doing it that way is it worked better than it's ever. Oh worked. yeah, man, it's, it's economy of words. Yeah. The, the shorter you can make it, the better. And I was just like, Shh, sh- get to the <clears> point. <throat> so yeah. now that's probably what it's going to be. Now it's going to be a footnote on stuff. But I'm it, doing that with all my stuff. I'm going through all my material. And I'm cutting out everything I can. Like I'm just I take it and I'll just what can I remove. Like, how can I get to this punchline faster? Like, oh, yeah. the fastest. And, and yeah, it is tough. And it's, it's funny, man. A lot of the things that I hang on to, when I cut it out, I'm like, why was I hanging on to that? It is, it's, I have the, I have a thing also I, I, I use, uh, I call it my, my no shit rule. It's, it's, it like prevents me from having too much exposition. Yeah. You know, so I like, if, if, if I write something, I'm like, oh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> then it, it has to go. Yeah. Because it's just too much exposition. It's like I'm explaining things too much, or over-explaining, or you know. When Steve was a uh, when I the first no the second time I took Steve's class, uh, he was he was like he was like you got to trim the leather off of it. Like you got to cut some of this boot leather away. <clears throat> and like it's I, I go back and I look at stuff now. Like uh, 
he he nitpicks at me about the gummy bear bed all the time because he's like he's like yeah. man he's like you can get there quicker and like I'm so dead set in my head because that thing smacks. Well, you know if you if you don't want to cut any of it out, you could probably find more punchlines inside it. Yeah, you, you could probably punch it up. Yeah, I feel yeah. I feel like that one at some point I can like taffy pull, which ironically is about candy. So, uh, yeah. but like I feel like I can pull that out and do a couple more things. That one, that one I want to focus on uh, more. I just I really really have this sick fascination in my head at some point this year, like taking a couple dudes, getting a space put together somewhere, and recording like some fifteen quippy like um, like the degenerate style quick in specials and putting them out just not because I want content out in the world, but because if I do that material and I get done of it, I have to write more material. Well, if you just do 15 minutes, you can still use that material, but that, that material is going to change anyway. Yeah. yeah but it's, yeah. I, man, I've been so stagnant with some stuff and I felt, I felt so bad. And then like I started at Jughead's, what I'll do on Mondays is I'll do like one joke that I know is a joke that I like or that I'm working on. And like the rest of it, I'm just kind of being a madman. And it's been working. And I don't know whether it's just the crowd out there is just inebriated enough to like it or if it's actually good. And then I can take it to places like Monster Cade or like Back to the Box. And it works most of the time. Yeah. Um, but it's that's changed the way I've I've done it too. I feel like that's more <clears throat> more fluid. And that that's one thing that I lack, or that that I feel like that I lack in it is I feel like I'm finally to the point where it's like, it doesn't have to be this, or I don't have to write stuff out. Like, used to, I'd get on stage with a piece of paper that had my stuff written out. Yeah. Now, it's an index card, with, especially if I'm going up to do 30. It's an index card with bullet points on it, and we're going to... Yeah, it's a set like, list. Yeah. That This is what we want to do. I don't care how we get there. Mm -hmm. And if we miss stuff, cool. If not all of it gets done, cool. As long as they had a good time, that's all I care about. Yeah. Like I can beat myself up about how I feel I did my set later, but as long as the crowd enjoyed it, that's all that matters. Yeah, that's true. I, and you, you've gotten really comfortable on stage too. I've noticed like when you when you're on stage, you, you just look really comfortable. You, you're very relaxed and confident, and and that's a that's one of the biggest. I think one of the biggest parts of stand up is dude. That took forever to get there. Yeah, well, you you've always been pretty comfortable on stage, I think, but it's definitely noticeably different now. Yeah, and I'm, same same with Seth too, man. Oh, really? Yeah, you were... I'm uh, fooling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you and Seth Kerman and Ethan, all three of you guys, man, uh, on a show uh, maybe about a month ago. Oh, yeah. You guys had killer sets. Oh, like all, yeah. All three that, of you. Was that the one that yeah. JD headlined at? Yes. Yeah, that yeah. one was fun, dude. Dude, that show was bananas. That show was that awesome. Was awesome. You were on that show too, right? No, no, I was there. I was okay, there. yeah. But I it was, wish I was on that. No, it was the, a great show, yeah. No, that the, was one where it was like I was walking up there. Much. And I was like, dude, I'd have to be a motherfucker to mess this one up, dude. Like, I don't know. It was just like walking up there. It was like, it was, it was like great one energy. of those shows where I was like, this is going to be awesome. Like before I went up. Yeah. And then it was. And I don't know what Jenny did or whatever, but it was like the well, most fun I've ever had hosting for sure. It was a, it was a packed house, which is always best. Yeah. And you guys just had good sets, man. Like your material, like don't. Short yourself. It was good material. Like your Thanks, your man. set was really good. It was tight. Your punches were. I mean, your laugh rate was really high too. Thanks, man. And all three of you guys. You guys all did really well, and it was impressive. I was like, oh, I got to go home and start writing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like one you? of those sets where I walked out, and I was like, it feels like steam is coming off my head. Like that's like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, you put the pressure on me. That's that a like, nice thing to. These young dudes, I gotta look forward to. Can't let them past me like that man that was definitely one of them shows where i went home like it was the that was i felt like that after that one like i remember leaving that show and i hung out with everybody afterwards like you know we do and i was like i remember i got home molly looked at me she was like what are you doing i was like i'm going over these fucking jokes like this is ridiculous dude that's like ethan's such a fucking powerhouse man like he's so him and him and durag both and and old sethy boy back here, guys, yeah. like crazy that like some of the stuff that y'all write and come up with is just like I'm just like, fuck, I wish I thought of that first. Like, that's so good. But then, like, it, it's the experience on it. But, like, watch, like, the three of y'all, like, give me, like, old school Death Squad vibes, for sure. Like, it's like, yeah. it's almost like watching Sickler, Segura, and those guys, like, back before, you know, the world went bananas. Mm -hmm. Like, when they were, like, grindy, grindy. Like, back when, like, Segura put out White Girls with Cornrows. Yeah, if the three of you guys, <laughs> if the three of you guys keep working together and help each other out, it could, it, you guys could take it a long way. Oh, yeah, for sure. You take it all, all the way, you know, and, and, 
Uh, you know, if if I were your age, if I were your age, um, I'd be looking at Austin. Yeah, dude. Yeah. If Austin I were your age, I'd be looking Austin. at Austin. All three of you guys would fit in perfectly there. Yeah, and get a lot of stage time. You could go up four times a night, and and you'd get on a lot of shows too. And and if you really want to be a professional comedian, dude, if I was if I was your age, if I was like you three guys, I'd be there. That's where I'd be right yeah. now. And you know. I, I have a family. I have a life. I'm established here, so I need to be here. And I love being here. I love it here. But if I was your age and I didn't have all that stuff, I just had a wife and we didn't have kids, dude, I'd be in Austin because you guys can do whatever you do here or there and make more money doing it there. And you can definitely produce a podcast there. I hate to lose you, but, you know, (laughs) I'd hate to see you miss a big opportunity too. You know, Cool. So I've keep, heard some people talk about Austin before. Yeah, it's I, been. Uh, I would try to find. In the I would try brain. to figure out how to get there. Yeah, yeah, as quickly as possible. I mean, there, there's definitely an end yeah. for for us down there. Like Casey Rockets down there a lot. Uh, Sam Prickett's down there. He's a door guy at the mothership. And then like just around there, there's there's 17 other established rooms. Like you know, the mothership showed up and everybody's like, oh, that's the mecca, and it might be. But there's other clubs that have been there that have been doing it, and that just put a dot on the scene. It's just a cool place, too, man. It's a yeah. huge music hub. You know, there's a lot of really great music that's come out of Austin. Oh yeah, Austin's fantastic. Yeah, so it's it's just a cool place. It's a it's got a it's got a really awesome creative vibe to it. Oh, yeah. If I was Seth Age, I'd go to Austin for sure. Heck yeah. <laughs> And especially like Ethan and the other Seth. Those guys are younger than you, aren't they? Yeah. Well, is uh, Durag Seth younger than you? I think both of them are younger than me, yeah. Yeah, they are. They I definitely forget are. how young Ethan is. Like, I'll talk to Ethan, and I'll be like, oh, he's my age. And I'm like, oh, wait, he's 23. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Living that Jordan year, baby. Yeah, both those guys, like, when they came around, it, like, made me want to... It made me go to more mics and do more stuff because they were out. And Ethan's always like, yeah. hey, you you want to come to this? And I'm like, yeah. So, like, Ethan's, like, a really big factor in me going out That's more good. and writing more, for sure. Like, someone starting around the same time as you, around the same age. And, like, yeah, for and sure. And you guys are all, like, pushing each other, too, because you yeah. have, you know, you, you guys, um, you're all good writers, and you're all funny dudes, so it's 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 like you're just gonna make each other better and better. Yeah. In fact, the three of you should have a podcast. That would be fun. You should oh hear. shit, here it goes. <laughs> Put it on the channel. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do have the space. So yeah. 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 That'd be good. I, I think that'd be a cool show. Dude, I'll yeah. write the intro music for free. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some bongos in there. I feel like we're a bongo vibe. Dude, Those I'll guys. make it sound like Ricky Ricardo. Dude. I'll, I'll play some Stooges guitar for it. or something. See, see, we got things. We got things and stuff that we can make happen. <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd watch the fuck out of it. I think it'd be good. I think it'd be a good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll pitch it to the Seth and Ethan. You know? To the Seth. Yeah, the other Seth. We'll I'll produce it. I love how he doesn't refer, refer to himself as the Seth. Well, yeah. I know that I'm Seth, so when I say Seth, I don't want to be like Bob Dole. You know, people know I'm talking about another <laughs> Seth. <laughs> You don't want to talk about yourself in, in the third person? No. <laughs> I'll leave that to Bob Dole or whatever. It does sound weird when I have to say, I have to say Kerman most of the time. I never say Seth. Usually does anyone Kerman. still know who Bob Dole is? I don't know does anyone why. in your generation know who Bob Dole no, is? No, I other than you? know who Bob Dole is. Yeah, but you're you're an old soul or something. something just got, older brothers. You're too, like when so. uh, back back in the 90, 80s and 90s when, when the phone lines would get mixed up and you're yeah. on the phone and you start hearing someone else's conversation. That's that's like your your uh maybe that's what happened to me, yeah. Your past life is like blending in with your current life. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so also, you're, you're interested I, in all this old shit. I think another reason I know who Bob Dole is, back to what me and Tony were talking about earlier, is watching early Family Guy as a kid. Like way yep. too young. I was like, I didn't get the references and then I and then I would look up that stuff to oh. get the joke. And yeah. I'd be like, Oh, I know I know a lot about Bob Dole now for some <laughs> reason. See, that one that right there drives me nuts. Like I like and I don't know if it's because like I don't think I'm that old, but fucking Seth's like, you know, early family guy. I was too young to watch it. And I'm sitting here like, dude, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it, like I understand I watched it happen, but Jesus Christ. Like, it's not, you're not that old. How old are you? 32. Yeah, you're barely older than he is. Yeah. yeah. Like five years older or something. Four. You're like my um, other, five. I have an older brother than his age. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. You're still young. You're still 10 years younger than me. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, but I hung out with dudes that were like my whole, I, I'm, 
We saw Bob Dole in Family Guy. Neil saw Bob Dole. <laughs> yeah, I really saw him. Yeah, he he was an elected official when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> no, we. I think I hung out with a lot of older people though. That was why, like, because I'll like some guy came into the tattoo shop the other day and uh, he just out of nowhere, like we were talking about stuff. He was like, "How old are you, dude?" I was like, 32. He was like, "Man, I thought you were fucking forty something." And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> like, on the one hand, I appreciate the knowledge and shit, but, like, on the other hand, like... Well, you grew up poor, man. You grew up, you grew up fast. When, yeah. When you're, when, you're, when you're poor, you have to grow up fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no choice, man. Yeah. Like, it was like fucking trap or die, baby. Live or die, one of the two. That's it. Man, I... Uh, that's one thing I wanted to get... I've finally gotten to the point where I've started talking about stuff like that on stage. Like, I'm finally comfortable with it. Like, uh, I started doing, like, cocaine jokes finally. And that took a lot of work because I've been so, and I don't know why it bothers me, but like, it's different when you talk to somebody about like the BS you went through and you're trying to coach them how to not go through Dude, it. Dude, it's insane what we do. Yeah. We, we tell people all kinds of crazy shit and personal stuff that we should never say to anybody. Exactly. And we do it to yeah. people we have no idea who they are. Yeah. It's, it's bonkers, man. Like we're. We're crazy people. Like we should. Uh, my, my, I but it was artists. I'll never you know? see them again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never <laughs> see these people ever again. But you want you want them to see it. Like That's you want. True. It's, it's um. I don't know what the. It's it's just you know just the the desire to express yourself. Yeah. You know, and express ideas. It's fun to express ideas too. It's it's fun to take a complicated idea, and and it could even be something that's taboo or not politically correct. And and then express it in a way that they can make people who typically would be offended by it or wouldn't like it laugh at it. Oh yeah. And it's and it's and if if you do it the right way, you know, like I, you know, we we're all we all offend people sometimes, but it's like I, I said recently, like if you if if it's if it's done in the right way and it's coming from a good place and it and it offends you. Then don't be mad at the artist. Be mad at the thing that's offending you. Oh yeah. And and maybe that's the thing that needs to be fixed. Not you know this art is just expression. Well, it was like uh, a couple of weeks ago. I got on. I I started working this new bit. Uh, and and I got to the bit by looking up the leading cause of death in America currently, which ironically is heart disease. Uh, go hmm. figure. And uh, I, I in a bar of arguably uh, average Americans, which are usually on the heavier side nowadays, if we look at the scale. Uh, I, I got up in front of them and the first words out of my mouth were, we're too fucking fat as a country. And they laughed their heads off because they're like looking at me and I'm like, I mean, I get it, dog, but like, let's let's talk about it. Yeah, we're not healthy. No. For sure. No, yeah. we're not. Uh, we're getting there. Where I'm getting Mentally there. or physically. <sighs> Mentally, is a, that's a whole other thing. Well, the physical is an expression of the mental. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I that's, that's one thing that Molly pointed out to me the other day that drove me nuts. Uh, like, and it, it good way drove me nuts. She was like, you know, like lately you just like, she was like, I put on like a, a shirt that I hadn't worn in forever. And she was like, that shirt's big on you. And I was like, oh, word. And she was like, hey, you seem like smoother, relaxed. Like what you're doing now, you seem like in it. She was like, you work a lot. You're tired a lot. But you seem like, you know, you're flowing better. And I was like, yeah, That's I good. am. Like, I feel like I make better choices now too. Like, and not because somebody said, do this or die. Because like. I don't know. I guess just because I feel better. Well, I think you, I think I think uh, our society lacks self awareness. Yeah. I think a lot of people lack introspection, and everybody is everybody's encouraged to do this too. But everybody's pointing and looking at other things and blaming all these other things and other people for their problems, and they're also focusing on uh, on symptoms of real problems instead of focusing on the problem itself. It's like everybody wants the low hanging fruit and they want to attack that, but it really it's all in. We all have to go inward to to solve these these deep problems in our society, and and I even think of my body um, separately. I, I think of my body as as a separate thing from my mind and and from who I am or what I am. You know, I think our minds are sort of um, our minds are sort of like these beings inside these bodies that control these bodies. These bodies allow us to interface. And, and, and the body is almost like a, the body is almost like a, um, an, a primal animal that, that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still going through its evolutionary process and it's still 
um, it's still adapted to things that it evolved to do, you know, thousands or even millions of years ago. Yeah. And, and so we're, we're constantly fighting this animal with our minds. And I, and I think if you can look at your body as something separate than your mind, it helps you deal with urges and, and addictions and stuff like that, because you, you, you can, um, you can be aware that the body just wants it just wants to survival it wants to survive and it also it, it it's excessive your body um just wants pleasure it just wants to feel good yeah because it doesn't know when it's going to get it again maybe right it, it's, it's like just it just always wants thing. to be comfortable and if you think about all the stuff we do technologically we're really just trying to be more comfortable yeah and and so i think just being aware of that with your body and and making it work and and pushing it it makes it behave you better it makes you it makes it obey you um it's it's like it, does your body serve you or do you serve discipline your body kind of yeah thing. yes discipline yeah. yeah and 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 so i, I you know i, tr- I constantly hard. try to monitor what my body's up to and you know and 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 i try to pay attention to how it's behaving so i can control it oh yeah you know, so it's like a wild animal you know <laughs> it, that's that's something i gotta I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sit back and reflect on that because that's that's deep as hell and it but it makes so much sense because it's like I think like back before I got like straight and everything like I I like I was definitely a slave to my body for sure like during that period of my life I was definitely a slave to my body a hundred percent like especially in that context and like it's just little things over time you know that I've that I've gone to change this to turn me into that because like what's up here is totally different than you know, the prevail. And now like, especially with telling jokes, it's, it's like blurred the line between them all. But like, this is definitely the truest version of me that there has ever been. Cause like I can, I can be a nerdy, weird, creative gearhead dude all at once, as opposed to like, at one point you had to fall into that category. Fuck that shit. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I think the best art is honest. Yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, in acting, um, this is where act, I think acting helped me with, with comedy. And in acting school, you know, they, they, they taught us, um, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're working on a, a project or whatever and you're that character, you have to, you have to have, like, you have to, you have to, have a, you have to create a strong point of view about what you're saying and why you're saying it and, and who this character is. And, 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 and also, you have to be that, you have to be yourself as in those, under those circumstances. So it's really you expressing a real, pers- a real point of view under those circumstances. And, 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 and in acting, it's, you know, you're, you're portraying something that's not real. And, and so your, your choices, your choices won't have anything to do with this, with the, with the project you're working on or the, that character, but they all have things to do with your life, and you have to create scenarios to give you a certain emotional life for that character. Right. So when you are that character, it's it it it's real, it's connected, and it's and it's truthful. You're not thinking about what you're saying or in your head about stuff. You're just in the moment, you know, living that living that experience. Uh, but it, but in comedy, I think uh, the thing I like about comedy is it's. It works a similar way, but it's, 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 um, it's more honest. It's, it is real. You know, it is, it is our experience that's inspiring all this, this material. And, and, and it's, it's our real point of view about how we actually feel about these things we're saying, as opposed to, um, you know, something someone else wrote or, you know, something that's not real or is fantasy. Dude, and it's, true. Why, we, it's harder to hide, too. Yeah, it's very like vulnerable. Gonna, it's the yeah. most vulnerable. Like, oh, yeah, you've got, you've got to be 100% open with everything. And, like, uh, you know, uh, I've heard people say, don't let the truth get in front of a good joke. And that that's true. Like, all of us embellish to a degree. Well, yeah, I mean, we say some crazy nonsense, yeah. too, and that's okay. But it, we're, ha- we're we're also playing. You know, yeah. we're having fun. And and. And people want you to say some wild shit that's not true too, and they I think they can tell what's what. Oh yeah, yeah. usually. Yeah. I mean, some of our life is kind of crazy too, so some of it they're probably not sure. But oh yeah, there's there's definitely some stuff that <laughs> I've talked about where they're like, that's never happened. It's like, oh, that's definitely happened. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> like that, that. Yeah, for real. I wish it hadn't happened. Yeah, no, no. That's, that is actually why I'm here right now doing this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because all that ridiculous shit happened. I lived season one of The Wire. God damn it, fucking. That's a great season. It is. 
It is is arguably the best season. I think f- I'd say fourth is probably the best. Ah, season. We could debate about that for okay. like seven hours, Seth. I'm sure. We pick who, out plot. Who were you in the wire, Tony? Who were you? Who? Which character were you in season one? Oh, I mean, I'm the big bad wolf, baby. Were you I am bubbles? Omar, dog. Oh wow. I am Omar, or I was Omar for yeah. sure, for sure. I've like, only seen one episode of that show. Dude, so it was I. So went, you robbed people. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Definitely, definitely, 100%, 100%, dude, but it was... That's what Omar did, yeah, you're right. I I thought about, for me, when I was out doing my dirt as it was, like, yeah, I was doing it to survive, but in my head, if I'm not doing it, somebody else is going to. I'm at least being straight up with these people. I wasn't giving them trash. You know, I... I, I tested all my own shit on myself, uh, as a good scientist should, or street pharmaceutical representative, as Ali <laughs> uh, Sadiq says. FTA approved. Tony approved. Yeah. Yeah. FTA, baby. I'm just happy you survived all that and you turned You're it around. That's the yeah. Main thing. Oh, man, yeah. I had to, man. It was, uh, it was, uh, which don't get me wrong. Like, people ask me all the time, it's like, would you go back and change anything? Not a fucking thing. But I had also, a ball. also, the problem is not you. I mean, yeah, you made bad choices. You should yeah. have done the shit you did. Yeah. It was dumb choices based on the construct we live in. But you shouldn't have felt the pressure to make those choices either. This, there's a thing that creates those scenarios. Yeah. And, and we're not fixing the thing that creates those scenarios. We're just attacking the symptoms. We're like a pharmaceutical company that mm. creates very profitable drugs that will that will mask your symptoms forever, but will never heal you. Yeah. yeah. And we need to heal and not mask symptoms. Exactly. Yeah, no one has, no one is surrounded by options and they're like, Oh, I could go to Ivy school. I could do that. Well, I'm actually going to rob people now. Like, it's not like, right. It's like, yeah. Oh, I have to rob people now. It's like, it's never yeah. like, a, oh, I want to do this, you know? So. Now there are like the, the sociopaths are really interesting because, yeah. Because a sociopath has no feelings at all. You know, they, they don't feel anything for anyone, and they don't feel anything about anything. Yeah, they're just... They do want, though. They do have yeah. desires, so they'll want things. And the interesting, interesting thing about a sociopath is the only reason they won't kill you or hurt you to take what you have is because they respect the laws. They just understand there are, there are rules in society. If I break the rule, then I can't be free. Yeah. So I can't do the stuff I want to do. That's the only thing that keeps them from hurting us. Yeah. So that's that's why in the past, you know, kings were people that just would just slaughter as many people as possible. How many people are going to kill around here to be king? <laughs> like, I'm going to keep killing people until yeah. you guys make me king. The answer and is And then eventually awesome. they're going to be king. And that's, you know, that's how society's worked. And, that, and we're still ruled that way in a lot of ways. A lot of our... Our most powerful people in our societies are sociopaths because they don't give a shit about anything. Exactly. They feel no pressure, so they never cave, they never crack, and they'll just do whatever it takes to be powerful. And and that's we've got to get we just have to be smarter as a society to identify that behavior and and remove those people from places of power. Yeah. And and that's and it's not simple because they're so manipulative and and most people they just I don't know. I think it's. I think it's just less. We also kind of celebrate it a little bit too. Like there are probably some true. historical yeah. figures that were like, "Look how great this person was." Oh god, and then all of them. Like, oh, they were probably insane. But they also <laughs> wrote their own histories too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The stuff we read about them, a lot of that's bullshit. You yeah. Know? Oh, definitely, doctor. Like, there's some facts that we know, but a lot of the stuff about their personalities and how good they were. Yeah. I, I'd like to really meet them and talk to them and see. All right, well, I invited Julius Caesar here today, and he's going to come in. Yeah, now, I'd, I'd be interested to meet some people from ancient Rome and Greece. Yeah. You know, because we, I think, I think some elements of society were probably pretty good during yeah. that period. And then the Dark Ages pretty much ruined all of this. Yeah. It's, it's probably my favorite pantheon of gods, for sure, is like Greco Roman era gods mm. were awesome. Oh like, yeah, like because it's uh, I, it, I I like to read a lot, uh, oh, ironically, and but like religion like uh, was really cool to me because like you know I grew up here with and my my grandparents and my mom they're all from Lansing North Carolina. So you grew up in this studio. We found you here. Yeah, right outside. <laughs> right outside. You but grew like, up with Jesus. Yeah, the Southern Baptist yeah. to the core. 
Um, so like the moment I figured out that there's other ones out there, I got into as many of them as I could. Like I like Norse mythology. That's cool. But like the, the two that always stuck with me were like Egypt and like Greco Roman stuff. I prefer the Greek gods pantheon because there's gods for everything. The Egyptian ones are insane. Like it's crazy, but like Greco Roman area stuff like that was, I would never want to go back to that time. I would, I would like to state as a disclaimer, nobody wants to travel back in time to whatever time period they think they would survive in, be it the twenties, the fifties or forever ago. Nobody. You might think you want to. I think you that all fucking the time. Don't. It's like, the best right now. If you live here, yeah. depending, yeah. on, depending on where you live, if you live in a in the in a first world country, it's the best now. Yeah, fantastic. There's there's places that it's still like it was hundreds of years ago. Oh yeah. You know, and and you know, unfortunately, we most first world countries exploit those people. Yeah. Um, Terrible. It's this that we're not fixing. We're just we're not fixing problems. We're, yeah. we're making them worse in a lot of ways. But if I could like Sherman and Mr. Peabody, like back to like ancient Rome for like an hour, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I'm that's fine. But like, if yeah. somebody asked me, yo, Tony, what time do you think you could live in now? Dog today, right fucking now. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need meds. today right here, right now. <laughs> yeah. I need, I need meds and you know conveniently the, located food stores. I, I've been looking at a lot of this uh, stuff about ancient Egypt and it's, Really amazing! Like it's it's blowing my mind. Dude. Like the the technology and stuff that they and and so I think what's fascinating to me is that there's all this precision tech. There, there's all this precision work that's been done in ancient Egypt on, on some of these statues, like some of the oldest the oldest stuff in in Egypt. You know, like the pyramids, the Great Pyramids, and and then. Um, Really, specifically the Great Pyramid, the biggest one, and the Red Pyramid, mm -hmm. and, and well, really all three of the the main pyramids. I didn't know they had names. Really. There's a, there's a bent one too, but it's it's just different than the other. It's yeah. clearly a different type of construction, but uh, but the main, uh, I guess the main three pyramids, um, the construction technology that was used to build those things is. Amazing! Bananas. It's unbelievable. They, they, so there's like I think the biggest pyramid has like two around two million stones, and a lot of those stones weigh like eighty tons each. Whoa. And they're from five hundred miles away. These are solid granite blocks, granite, like one of the hardest stones on earth. There's no way that they built that with 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 uh, bronze tools. It's impossible. It, it would just take so long, and it would just be. It's just it's it's unimaginable. And they can't. The tools that we know the Egyptians had are not capable of doing the type of precision. Pre precision work that a lot of that stuff has has been created with or uh, that was used to create a lot of that that um, those those ancient blocks and stuff I mean there's there's stuff in ancient Egypt that's uh, like they have these big uh, like vats like they're boxes like these big granite boxes that are carved out of solid pieces of granite and they're like the tolerances on those things are are, are are precision. Like, yeah. I mean, you're talking about like to the two thousandths of an inch or something. Like, perfect. I mean, inside, sharp, perfect, ninety degree angles and corners, and 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 then bore holes that are machined. I mean, you can see the yeah. the grooving is so tight, and, and uh, it's like they were using some kind of like really giant lathes or something or mm. CNC machines. Yeah, stuff that we just don't. We, I don't even think we can build that stuff today. We we could we could certainly construct yeah. machines machinery to build that if we wanted to create that. But it was like a part of their society. Like they needed these things. Yeah. There's a there's a guy that um. I wonder if like a big part of it was like back then. It was like I feel like the psyche was different. Like they're just like I don't know a guy who had to cut the granite. They were like, this is all you do. It's not like he had to go, oh, no, I had to go pick up the kids or I had to go do my tax. It's like, no, you're the guy who cuts the rocks. Well, and it's, they didn't have to you, do that you, stuff. Also slaves. But, no, know. they they they've, they've determined a lot. Of, most of, They yeah. don't believe the work was done by slaves in Egypt. Mm. But also well, I mean, a, like hu a human could, like, uh, do all the shit for him. A human being, rocks. a human being could not physically do what has been done there. Oh. It's, it's physically impossible. These are um, these are machine grade carvings, so so like you'll see one of these boxes. I mean, I, when I say it's perfect, dude, perfect. it is 
perfect. Like it is machine made. And even like the little, there's like little beveled edges and stuff around the the sides of some of these pieces. Yeah. Those things are like octagonal. Like hmm. they're made with a machine. Like this, and it's perfect all yeah. the way around. I mean, I'm saying like to like the thousandths or two thousandths of an inch. I mean, like it's precision. It's it's made with a machine. It's not made by humans. So you're like an ancient aliens guy? No, it's not. That's human. I mean, it's human uh, human ingenuity. It's human technology. Yeah, but we just lost it. But it's just yeah, it's just gone. Huh. And and I think we'll prob. I think the I think the biggest problem, and it's a big problem with all the sciences. I think we're just now coming into a new age of science where we're starting to combine the sciences. So you're starting to see more and more um, experts from different fields working together to solve problems instead of just big egos, just making up shit and, and, you know, having their own, like wanting to be famous with their ideas Yeah. instead of wanting to just know the truth about something and, and, and really dig as deep as you can and, and being excited about disproving an idea or disproving your idea about something. And, and so I think now you've got experts in granite and in, in stone building. You have experts in, in uh, precision tools, and, and you have all these different experts. Uh, I found a chemical expert recently that had, had, has a hypothesis about the, about the pyramids. He believes that they very, possibly, very likely could have been uh, industrial facilities for creating chemicals. Hmm. And he 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 shows diagrams of how the pyramids are laid out and yeah. and how today's chemical manufacturing works, and the similarities are pretty interesting. I mean, he shows exactly how these things would work and function as chemical manufacturing facilities. Yeah, and and you know pushing water through the system using weighted stones and stuff, and it's really interesting. And That's cool that like one of the wonders of the world could have possibly been an ugly thing people had to walk by, <laughs> like when we drive past like chemical plants and stuff. And I mean, a lot yeah, of well, they were beautiful though, and I think that's, that's true, yeah. I think that speaks a lot of that society and that culture, what that was back then. You know, here's another thing too: the Earth is constantly changing. Yeah, and out of all the fossils and stuff we found, we found very little of the remnants of the, of the past. Yeah. And, and there are certain periods of time in the past that we find nothing because it's just erased. You know, so it's today, like today's society, only we only use about one percent, I think, of, of the of the of the earth of our for our inhabitants. Yeah. So if if we went extinct today, let's say a comet or an asteroid hit the planet and we all died, then you know, and, and you know, there's a chance within fifty thousand years, or by the time society rebooted, however long that takes, they may not have, they may have no idea that we ever existed. Everything yeah. would just turn oh, to yeah. dust. I think Graham Hancock or Graham Hancock has got a he's got a couple docs out that I've watched. Yeah, he's interesting. It. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's Good one journalist. of the people, and I, I like the I like the idea that he's got where society's older than we think it is. Like sure. it, it yeah. has to be because like everybody puts this stamp around like ten thousand years, and that's yeah. impossible. Like, well, well, current society is is six thousand years old. Yeah, current society. But they're talking about like the time like uh, what what he's trying to talk about is like like man is the way we think of man. Like the way that we perceive man is definitely older than science acknowledges. Well, we we well science acknowledges that human beings, Homo sapiens, are three hundred plus thousand years old. You know, and then there were other iterations of humans that go back millions of years. Yeah, two pre- million pre- years. That, yeah. yeah, I think Homo erectus goes back two million years, and they and they're humans. They're not Homo sapiens, but they they they're bipedal humans. Yeah, and and um and they just found another species that uh, they think it had uh, burial ceremonies and even a little bit of art, and and uh, Homo naledi. And they're older than us, and that's another. It's, and they're, not, they're humans, but they're not Homo sapiens. They're a different species, right? And and I think Neanderthal was the last spe- was the species that survived the longest, other than us, and and they died out only about forty thousand years ago. But you know, there is it's very possible there could have been many human species over time, and many different paths of evolution. The Earth's four or five billion years old, and uh, and if you think about what we've done in just six thousand years. And we talk about precision tooling too. We we didn't have precision tooling until the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
So how did they build that shit 6,000 years ago? And why Maybe. is the stuff they built 6,000 years ago way better than the stuff they built 4,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago? It doesn't Maybe make any sense. the pyramids sense. were built around this technology that was left there. They're like, some guy found a 3D printer, and he was like, hmm. Huh. Well, I think that, I think that um, a, a previous civilization, I think an Egyptian civilization that, that was there before the Egyptians that we know of, yeah. Had built an amazing civilization, and they may have been all over the place. They may have yeah. been all over the planet, and and something terrible happened, like a cataclysm. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of influence. There's a lot of there's a lot of evidence now that there was some kind of cataclysmic event that happened twelve thousand years ago at the end of the ice age, that maybe abruptly ended the ice age and caused crazy levels of erosion, and maybe just wiped a lot of people off the planet. Like yeah. just completely erased civilizations, and and because because I don't. We may never know who built the pyramids or who created that technology or who created those things that requires advanced precision technology to create, like some of the stonework they have. They, they've measured this stonework in, in facilities where they do precision measurements, and that yeah. stuff is to the two thousandths of, of an inch in That's precision. Crazy. And you're talking about granite and even harder stone than granite, like stuff that measures like a nine. You have to have diamond tools to cut it. And 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 the walls of those things are so thin you can shine light through them, and, and see granite. the crisp and they're well they're granite and yeah. and even harder like obsidian or something but yeah. uh, I don't know if it's obsidian but but harder stones than granite even and, and you know these stones have like crystalline stuff in them so when you shine light you can see the light shining oh, wow. through the the piece yeah and they're perfect I mean there's these things are so perfect they some of them don't even have flat bottoms they have like they're just rounded. And they're so balanced. When you set them down, they sit perfectly, perfectly still, yeah. and on the the Weebles very wobble. on like the axis point of the bottom. Axis Weebles. point of the bottom, yeah. Well, I think I think one of the things that said Egyptian society apart from other like a lot of other ancient societies that get talked about is Egyptian society is one of the few societies where the people could touch their gods because Pharaoh was God. But I think I think Pharaoh was God though because I think that dude killed a bunch of people. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I think the first pharaoh probably was probably the toughest dude in the area. Maybe he wasn't mean, but maybe he, but he was definitely respected. Well, and, the- and I think that's part of the confusion in ancient Egyptian history is is that the later people that eventually inhabited that area, well, they probably were already there. They're probably the ones that survived the cataclysm. It's like if if our society got destroyed now, then we would lose all our technology and everything. It would take thousands of years to redevelop. You know, if all of our, if the majority of our people got killed, we, and the grid went out, we wouldn't. We would have to start over. We we would eventually. We would be, the people that did survive would be living in the woods for the next you couple know, hundred years, several hundred years, and then it would take thousands of years to rebuild technology. And it wouldn't even be like this again. It would be a different thing. It would be. It would. It would be a different technology, and and so, I think, whoever constructed those things and, and developed the technology that was, was had those capabilities, those something terrible happened to those people. They're gone. And and the ones that survived didn't have the ability to, to do those things or keep that technology. So eventually they built a new civilization and they had all these ruins of um, these amazing ruins. And, and so they, whoever was leading those people just eventually took over those things and then they just claimed them. And so like you'll see, in ancient Egypt, you'll see a lot of uh, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of those uh, structures and 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 uh, ancient statues and stuff will have engravings on them that are primitive compared to the statue itself or to the piece itself. Yeah, like all those those uh, bowls and vases and stuff they found. They found like forty thousand of these things. Um, and a lot of them had an inscription in the side of them, which was which belonged to one of the kings, one of the pharaohs. But it was like scratched into the side of this <laughs> precision made thing that it would this is, nobody. Look what I made. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like your kid ruined your 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 bowl. You know, yeah. like it's. Or it's like when my brother uh, wrote uh, all the characters' names on rocket power on my dad's baseball. He got signed by the Cincinnati Reds. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. It's exactly like that, yeah. though. Same like when my brother carved daddy in the side of the truck that my dad just got for work. Yeah, or it's like if you it's like if you built a beautiful casino or something or a hotel. Yeah. And then you then you like you painted the name on the front of it. 
That's awesome. Those guys rule. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Like, it, it, it's impossible. But, but you know, and and so like you'll you the technology doesn't match. It's like yeah, it's, it's 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 the like oh you had this precision stuff to do this, but your handwriting is shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you used but you used a bronze tool to scratch your yeah. your name in the side of it. it doesn't make any sense. And, and and like you'll see like these big precision boxes in in uh, which I don't. Most of them aren't engraved, but there's a couple that are. Like, but they're in these facilities, and they're. I would say, it looks cl- it looks clear that these facilities are way older than the people that engrave things on these boxes. Yeah, and and I mean, this granite box is just massive and and perfect, and then it's got beautiful engravings on it, but very non precision engravings. Yeah. Like whatever they used to create that box with, they they could have made, they could have made a Dremel. You know, the guy retired. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the CNC machine's down, Todd. So fuck it, get a chisel. Yeah, scratch like, away, buddy. Yeah, I think. Uh, I and, think- and also, it's like a perfect like the the surface of this thing is like a mirror. It's yeah. like perfectly polished. Like. The only thing that would make this thing prettier is if I scratched a bunch of shit into the side of it. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, what you, what's happening? Well, and I th- you can look at some of the stuff that they did, like, because I know the first the first dynasty that they talk about who set up, you know, what we what we think of as Egypt, yeah. like the 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 pharaoh of that time wasn't even pharaoh, like he didn't refer to himself as pharaoh, but he was he was well liked and everything, and like his the the tombs that well the the place that they suspect his tomb is because they don't know where his tomb actually. Well, we probably know very little about all this stuff, honestly. Yeah. I mean. They're they're reading information that kings wanted people to read in the future. Yeah, but his <laughs> yeah. Uh, his stuff so. he was he was well liked uh, uh, allegedly, but like the the designs I'm sure, and stuff I'm that sure are on he his thinks stuff, he was it was was really ornate. <laughs> well, he was uh, uh, allegedly he was he was praised for being a very fair king. Yeah, but who who yeah exactly he wrote, wrote that though. Like he's the guy that hey tell everybody I was a good king so yeah. remember me. Tell everybody I was nice while I beat your ass. Yeah, boy. like if. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, absolutely, your majesty. Yeah, <laughs> that's why the scratching on the side of the bowl was shit. The guy was nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he was so cool. <laughs> Fuck. We figured it out. I do I do like theirs, though. Their, their, their god system was crazy. That's what got me into it with theirs, was just like the system of the way their gods worked. I like looking at um, these old religions and, and trying to... It's like early anime. Well, yeah. try, trying to understand the inspiration behind some of these, because a lot of it is, um, a lot of these religions come from ancient stories that it got passed down through civilization. Because used to everything was verbally passed down, mm-hmm. and, the, and I think it's, I think we dismiss a lot of the, the importance of those stories, and and, and even in the Bible and stuff. And, and well, yeah, if you look at a, if you look at Horace, like the story of Horace, mm-hmm. um, the story of Horace was written on papyrus. Allegedly, thousands of years before. Yeah, Christ. what five thousand years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. like pr- way predating Christ. Same story, exact same story. Well, similar, a lot of similarities. Yeah, the my, flood minus, and minus stuff, the yeah. cross and everything. Well, no, like horse, horse specifically. Well, not horse, but yeah, was like uh, horse specifically was like died, resurrected three days later, was persecuted for being a nice person, uh, had a message of togetherness and everything with everybody. Like his, the entire story, yeah. minus the crucifixion itself is almost a parallel and it's crazy. The Iliad is just the the, the flood the, and everything is just the Iliad. It's yeah. just Gilgamesh. Yeah. Gilgamesh. Oh yeah. Gilgamesh but you know, man. You know, I think um you know even even uh, with the Bible, I'm not an atheist either. I believe in God, but I I have my own beliefs about it. You know, I believe that God, the universe, I believe it's all one thing, but um and I think I feel like some of these ancient religious characters or, or individuals like Jesus or Buddha or or you know whoever uh, I think I think some of them were just very enlightened humans yeah you know and, and they and they the message they were trying to convey was that everything is connected it's all one thing and if if we can raise our consciousness to a certain level then we can all appreciate this thing together and and work together to make this thing heaven, you know, or what, or it can just be hell, you know, like we can just be terrible to each other and, 
and be poor stewards of our resources and, and of this amazing planet that we have and the, and, and the amazing experience that we have and, and, and just neglect it and take it for granted and, and, and it's, just, it's just hell. Like we just ruin everything. Or we can embrace it and, and be thankful for it and, and, and make the most of it and, and realize that you know the relationships that we have with each other and, and the, 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 the love that we have for our families and, and for other people those things can make this a, a beautiful experience for everybody, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, I, I grew up as a Christian and I grew up, um, uh, Ditto. yeah, I grew up, I grew up, um, devoutly Christian and you used not, to lead Bible studies, right? Yeah. When I was, when I was older, yeah, yeah. I, I, I taught an adult Bible study or an adult Sunday school class. When I was you invite those 16, guys 17. Yeah, I was, I was a youth leader. <laughs> Some in, of them, yeah. Uh, but I, I was a youth leader in my church for a while. Like, uh, but I was, I was very, I was very involved. Yeah. And and I, you know, studied the Bible a lot. There were a lot of things in the in the scriptures that um, I didn't. They didn't make sense to me. They seemed contradictory. Right. And, and then there were other things like um, I even. I, and this is going to be real controversial to Christians, but um, you know, when I read about there's a scripture in. I think it's in John. I could be wrong. It's been so long, but it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the, the Word, word was, was God." God. John and then, one one. There you go. Yep. Yeah, and then I think John one seven, maybe or one fourteen mm. or something. It says, "And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us." And and Christians will um, teach that that is uh, talking about Jesus. Jesus, and it is. You know, it is talking about Jesus, referring to Jesus. And Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man and the Son of God. And the Bible talks about the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. The Trinity. And, no, and those things like, well, what? it doesn't make any sense. If God creates the whole universe, everything, then why does he have to do all these things? You know, like why, why would he become one of us? Why wouldn't he just help us? Why wouldn't he just talk to us? You know, and, and, and you know, and then... Is it like mind, spirit, and body? What is what is it like? What? But now, now where I'm at, though, I think what I think it is, and what I think he was saying, and and all the all those like him is we're the universe experiencing itself. Yes, yeah. we're the universe experiencing itself, and and we are the son of man, the son of God, children of man, children of God. We're the universe. We're everything. It's all us, mm-hmm. and we're all it, and we have to appreciate it and and and, and be thankful for it, and be amazed by it, you know. And 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 when when I think and I th- and I think also, you know, Jesus would go and pray, and I, I never understood that. Like, why would he go pray? What's, to himself? Yeah, he's yeah. God. Why is he praying? And who's he praying to? Exactly. But I think what he's saying is is that God is everything. Call it God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. It's Whatever this thing is, we're a part of it. It's all one thing. It seems like we're not a part of it because we have this this illusion that we're separate from it, but it's all one thing, and we're all a part of it. And you should pray your intentions into it, and, and you should speak your intentions into it, and it helps you. It doesn't mean those things are going to come to come come to fruition, but if we're all speaking the same intentions, we're all praying the same things into it. Then those things will very likely happen because we're all on the same page. Yeah, we're all we're Wavelengths. all moving things forward to a one thing. Yeah, it's it's we're all different expressions of the same tool, but like most people think about the fact that they're the just like yeah. living life, you know, and they're moving through life so they can accomplish a goal. There is no goal. There's no goal to the end of it. In in the vast scheme well, of things, well, I think there is. I well, think it's, I think it's uh, I think it's higher consciousness. Yeah, yeah, but like it's it, understanding. But from 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 start to finish, realistically. Like there's not there's not a set necessary like you have to reach this pinpoint to make it happen. What mm-hmm. what you're meant to do, in my opinion, when your time when you when you're when you're animating the the, with lack of a better term because I said it earlier and it makes me laugh when you're when you're piloting the Gundam that you're piloting mm. through the spiritual universe, <laughs> like because you're piloting it, you're you're an expression of information that's yep. piloting a suit. You are consciousness. Like, yeah, it's an Edgar suit. Yeah. Where everybody's seen Men in Black. Yeah, audience, you've seen Men in Black. Yeah. We're all in an Edgar suit, a brand new Edgar suit. And we're walking around town. You don't live life. Well, this thing's not brand new. You're so, well, I mean, <laughs> mine's got some wear and tear. It's got a couple holes. I'm missing some parts. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you've got aftermarket ones, though. <laughs> I don't, we need some better parts. Yeah. yeah. I did. I, man, anyway. if they could put them in a Jags catalog, I'm down. But the, the trick is, is you're not supposed to live life. You're supposed to experience life. The, the, that's yeah. two different things. That's two totally different mm-hmm. things. Living life is monotonous. It's stressful. It'll tear you down and break you all to one thing. But you need that so you can experience life. Because experiencing life is where you find happiness. It's where you find enlightenment. It's where you experience sadness because you have to. Like, you have to understand all these emotions. Yeah, but, you know, that's that's a that's part of what I think even Jesus was talking about when he talked about the kingdom of heavens on earth, but man can't see it. Yeah. And that's paraphrasing, but that's what he was saying is a lot of people can't experience life because their life is too difficult to experience. That's understandable. Because their whole life is just... A lot of people have been converted to tools. And they have become a tool for a machine. And that machine will use that tool until it completely ruins it and throws it away and gets another tool. Mm-hmm. They're, just a, they're, just a, they're just a bit of a drill. They're a cog. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and that machine will, will fucking drill away until it wears that drill bit out. And it'll replace the drill bit. And that's how we treat our people in our society. And that's, sh- that's shitty, man. It is. We, we shouldn't and, do and, it. And, and, and those people can't experience life because they don't have a life to experience. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's my problem with, with the way we treat our people in our society. People are the society. When are we going to start investing in the people that create the society? And, and, and if we really value family and all these things that we just run our mouths about and, and, and get real worked up about, why don't we do anything about it? Yeah, we change the society. You we know what change I mean? the construct. Like, we don't care about families and values and all that shit. We care about money. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, we care about money. Yeah, that's we what our society m- cares about. That's, that's what the construct cares about. Our society does care about people because yeah. it, it is people. And they just want... They want to have a decent life. They want to, they want love and, and fellowship and friendship and 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 to they want to experience this amazing thing that we have. And they should be able to. We don't have to just just suck the life out of people. We can create a system where you don't spend your whole life just barely surviving knuckles as, to the grindstone as a, the whole as, a time. as a drill bit. Yeah. You, you know, you can actually be a drill bit for a fraction of your life. And then figure out what you're good at. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's the way they should. Do. It's the, the machine. Uh, this is going to sound bad. I, for the record, I know I listen to a lot of crazy punk rock in middle school and shit, but like I'm not an anarchist or anything by any means. But the machine has to be broken to be changed. You have to find a way to do it that works. And like there, there's people who have started to touch the dial. But it's it's unfortunately it's not happening quick enough. I don't think you have to break the machine. I think you just have to retool it. And I think we break things too much. I think our our solution to everything is just break it. Well, break and, it. And it's like it's mach- like it's like war. All the wars that we fight today are about acquisition of resources. Yes. And 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 we're typically just fighting poor people that can't really do anything else. And, and just and we're we're doing it because it's valuable because companies are making trillions of dollars doing it. Yeah, and they don't give a shit about people's lives and and all the casualties and all that stuff. It doesn't mean anything. And we're so good at war in this country, we don't even know we're at war. Yeah, like I've been we've been at war a whole my whole life, and yeah. I it's never inconvenienced me. It, yeah, it, same. The craziest thing <laughs> yeah, is literally. that to me, war and UFOs affect me the same. Mm. I guarantee you people in the Middle East aren't giving a shit about UFOs. Not at all. Like, they Not don't care. All. The people that are that are on the other side of the war, they don't care about UFOs. They care about war. Like, they want the war to stop. Yeah. And 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 they can't stop I it. I can identify these flying objects over <laughs> yeah. there, F-16s, and I am scared. So we just... But we just have to retool the machine. And we we, we can retool the machine easily. Actually, our, our Constitution is good here. Like, we have a pretty amazing Constitution. That's why freedom of speech is so important. Yeah. So you can speak out against power. And because power doesn't want you to speak. And, and and we can elect new people. We can. We just have to stop being manipulated by people that, that want to abuse us. Yeah. And, and, and 
We, but we don't have to tear anything down. We just have to just retool well, it. You well, know, when, re, when I when change I change the way it works. When I when I say break the machine, I don't mean like burn it to the ground and start from ash. Like I'm. So here's here's a here's a fun little tidbit of a reference. So like if you're drag racing, you're you're trying to set time. Cars are people. You, you built cars are <laughs> two, cars are people. Completely different. Cars image are people. In my head, <laughs> Cess is seventy two Nova. Um, <laughs> That's a solid car, man. Four hundred small good, block, three seventy three posi track rim, baby. Sess out sure here I shitting, like boy. That's a cool car. Yeah, yeah. But um, if if you if you're if you're drag racing, not RuPaul, but like on a track, uh, yeah, that was Prosetti. Um, oh, I like a seventy two Nova. Yeah, thanks, dude, Tony. I like that. I hey, came out here shitting. Car. Yeah, dude, out here shitting, baby. But like, if you're if you're building a car to do that, like y- your goal is to be faster. Your goal is to be better. So you're gonna, and that's the thing about like hot rodding. You're gonna break it. You're gonna break it. Yeah. I don't care what you spend on it. You're gonna break it. I've seen everybody break it. I've broken it many times, like catastrophically. Fireballs and pieces of metal everywhere and shit. You break it. But when you break it, you don't tear it back down to nothing. You're like, this is what broke. No, let's fix what we broke. And you make it better. You upgrade it. You buy forged internals. You change out your iron heads for aluminum heads. Uh, you send out stuff, you know, to that. You know, you find you a Muncie to put in it for a transmission because you know you can't break that shit. That's, uh, you get it ported, you get it polished, you get it Full run over. It. Yeah. You take your 35 millimeter eBay turbo off and you go to Garrett and buy 100 because you're a real fucking man. And then you put it on there and spray it with CO2 and run six second quarters, baby. Hell yeah. Well, then I don't know what somebody that meant, but I like that. Pulls up an electric vehicle and blows you away. Yeah, yeah. Then somebody pulls up in a Tesla <laughs> who's bought a Tesla for 80 grand. I've got 200 grand in this hot rod over here. And he's just, and I'm like, well, now I'm going to go hang myself. But, you know, that, that's. No, so no, what, I seriously, yeah. Yeah, you, so. You, you, but we, we're not fixing those things. Yeah, we're not, yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. But I've seen, like, just in in my short time here, at least with locally, uh, and when I say locally, I mean, like, with, with the people that I've hung around with and the, the kind of ne'er-do-wells and, and uh, rapscallions that I've made my friends throughout times. Not you guys. Uh, <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are good people. I hung out with some weirdos. Yeah, we're 72 <laughs> Novas. Mm-hmm. But, like, fucking... Um, just watching the way like we've changed the perception on the world and we kind of fixed certain things around us that made things more convenient or made it better for everybody. Um, well, the, the world is better. And, and so there's, you know, I think. And, and I'm talking about when I say a very local level, I mean like Guilford County, North Carolina. Fucking, so, at so least te- in my technology experience. makes things easier on people. Yeah, it really does. And and I think with with the current technologies, with AI and stuff like that, uh, you know, we're we're in this exponential curve that's, I think, increasing in in speed, um, likely going into a, a technological singularity, and that that that'll change all these things, and and, it, and hopefully for the better. You know, I, because. You know, technology is going to reach a place, uh, reach a level where it builds itself, and uh, we can create probably anything we can imagine. Oh yeah, and, and almost instantaneously. So I think you know, I think a lot of I think a lot of things that drive power um, will will become uh, obsolete, obsolete, just unimportant. Like it, it won't have. There will be no benefit in having power. You know, dude, I can 3D print a hot dog. You can't tell me nothing, dude. Right. Like, I'll be able to make my own food. And, and You'll like be able to 3D anything. print a hot dog that's actually good for you. Yeah. I was, I was, <laughs> I was literally about to say, I've heard, I've heard somebody say hot dogs aren't that great for you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're no good hot dogs. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm, I'm, I have an argument for that, man. Yum Yums is pretty fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> is it good for your, you? Your no. heart disagrees. Yeah. yeah, my heart does disagree for sure. Oh, you can for 3D sure. print another one. The, <laughs> yeah. Dude, if I can get a Yamaha heart, dude, fucking let's mm. go. Like a Yamaha 660 Raptor heart, let's get it, baby. Like all day. That heart would perform. Well, they'll be able to 3D print you a heart soon within the next two decades. Probably less, though. Probably within a decade. Hold, so hold on, Tony. I'm holding out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's close. I just want to um, be able to chug gravy again. And I think once I think once these uh, once we reach AGI and super intelligence, it'll solve it'll solve all the problems that we're working on now instantaneously, and then it'll start solving problems and creating technologies that we don't even we're not even thinking about. Like we don't even we can't even comprehend those things. Yeah, and then then as a whole we can experience stuff. Yeah, because there's no problems. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, well the, maybe there's always going to be uh, there's all like the the for for the universe to keep spinning. <laughs> 
Well, you know, you, you talked about the purpose thing. And, and I feel like the purpose of everything is consciousness. Yes. It's just, it's just awareness. And, and so I think as an organism, we're trying to become more conscious. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to experience things better and also not forget things. And so I think part of that uh, growth is, if you, if you take the whole all life on the planet, it's one organism that's constantly eating itself and growing and in eating other things too, but eating itself and growing and eating and growing and becoming more and more conscious and self-aware. And, and I think maybe AI is like the next level or next stage of consciousness or, or at least an element of it. And maybe it'll help us <coughs> reach a higher consciousness and maybe bypass some of the evolutionary blocks. If, it, if it's not the next stage in consciousness, it's definitely the next plug-in for consciousness. Yeah, sure. For it's sure. some kind of enhancement for us. Maybe yeah. it'll just enhance us. Some and we'll DLC. Be, we'll, we'll, we'll tap into it in a, in a more direct way than we have the Internet in the past. And, and then that'll take us to a higher level and, and maybe help us escape these biological bodies. I think that's part of the process, too. I, I think we're going to escape biology. I think we'll, consciousness will become uh, something that doesn't rely on biology, but it, it, it just can uh, utilize or it can, it can harness energy on a level that we can't comprehend. It, it can harness energy from the sun. It can harness energy from the planet in much more efficient ways that we have capabilities of doing. Yeah. You know, there's so much energy just in, in a single atom. But we just don't know how to harness it. Maybe that's what ghosts are. Oh, the the dis, the destructive. <laughs> whoa. For real though, you never whoa. know. Whoa, the destructive force that is contained. That's how you ruin an idea. You just throw ghosts into it. it. Well, you, well, we call ghosts. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a ghost of my Sorry, own self, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> Yo, I'm cool with spectrals. Like, as long as I can get, to, I just want some ectoplasm in a jar that I can put on my shelf. Nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Just like, yeah, that's ghost matter right there. Honest, I mean, I couldn't help myself. Everybody come over. It's like, what's that on your shelf, Tony? That right there? Huh, that's ghost splooge. That's what that is. <laughs> ghost that is me. Ghost splooge. But, uh, like, uh, you know, be, being a former, uh, I had a thought. This this is the years of extracurriculars catching up to me right now, Sorry, people. Man. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, it'll come back. It'll come back. We were. Tell we, consciousness. Conscious. Yeah. So it's, I. You know, like I said, we're we're piloting Gundams. Basically, we're piloting shells. You know, I've you know, I've pulled back the veil, you know, a couple times, uh, and like knowing that you're nothing but this collection of like data. Basically, uh, you know, you can call it memories, you can call it energy. It's data. It's all raw data. It's Every, all information. Everything's, everything's data. Everything's yeah. information. What that data. is pulling back the veil. What do you mean? Oh, pulling back the veil. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I've been to the ends of the universe and back, man. Like, it's a, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you get to a point in life where you're like, I can't figure anything else out. And everybody's like, yo, man, check this out. It's called dimethyltryptamine. It's oh. going to, it's going to, it's going to take you somewhere you've never been before. And, um, it's, it's, it's in, inward. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you, you, you go, you go to where everything is. Mm. Like, it's, it's the place. It's the source. It's all of it. It's everything and nothing at the same time. It's, it's just it's there. There is no time because time's not real. It's just the passive of everything all at once. Everything everywhere all at once, and like just and once you go, that's it. Like you understand you 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 understand how everything works, and yet at the same time you have no idea how anything works at once. You but, just understand it's way more complex than yeah than people can comprehend. Yeah, it's not it's not as easy as you live, you die, you go somewhere or something like yeah. that. It's 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 living, it's breathing, everything. Everything is life. Everything is death. Everything is everything. Everything is nothing all at once. Well, you know, they, they, they haven't talked much about the the big discovery they made a couple of years ago with, Who's with they? In quantum physics. Uh, you know, the, the Nobel Prize in uh, physics where they, oh, the, uh, those three scientists with the Bell, yeah. the, the Bell theory of inequalities, the, the, the study of, um, uh, it was the study of entanglement. Yeah. Quantum entanglement. Yeah. Quantum entanglement, yeah. And, and, and what they, I mean, what they proved with their theory is that there is no physical reality. It's all that everything is just information. It's just yeah. a singularity of information, and this is like a projection of that information. Yeah, like we're just how we perceive it. Yeah, we're just interfacing. Yeah. With, we're we're part of the information, interfacing with other. We're we're conscious entities inter interfacing with the other with the other information, and this is 
and and what we experience is all we have access to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there could be infinite levels of experience that we just don't have access to. Because we're uh, in, uh, we experience time. Yeah. I guess. And yeah. we just, you know, we're just limited. It's like yeah. we're, you know, if if you're if you're a pencil, you know, you're never gonna be. You're never gonna be a pen. Yeah, yeah, or a paintbrush. Or you're never or, gonna or, like if you woke up a pencil and made it conscious and you talked to it about time, it'd be like, "What are you talking about?" You <laughs> yeah, know? it doesn't get the concept. Yeah, you know? there, there was. Isn't it like I don't know. That's a well, it's more example, like a better better, better no, examples is, is if you're if you're if you're um, if you're an etch a sketch, you're never gonna be an iPad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, so it's it, you just can't do the stuff an iPad can do. An iPad can do so many things that an etch etch sketch could never even come close to. You know, so it's. It, we're, you know, we're very limited in 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 our experience. Yeah, we're like little antennas, and and we only have a reception. We have a very limited reception. Hmm. And, well, we just and, render data like in the way we render data. It was like because like I think you know with the theory, it's like everything that's happened in front of you is stuff you can see, and that's what renders data. Yeah. This in theory, everything behind me right now, nothingness, vast blank, empty, whatever. But my brain just renders it now for you. It's the same but opposite. Yeah. You can see everything for me. It's and like, only there when you when you when you observe it. Yeah. Like uh, I can tell you there's a blue curtain the there. The information exists. Yeah. But somebody has to observe it. <laughs> exactly. To make it real. Yeah. And and uh, you know, I it, it also seems kind of like uh, like I don't exist in Tony's mind right now because I'm behind him. But now I do because I'm talking. Well, exactly. you, I, well mean, I know you're there though. That's the <laughs> I mean it's really more like you are Tony. Yeah, mm. and Tony's you, and and we're all we're all Tony, we're all Tony, it, it, because I am the walrus. The consciousness, <laughs> I think, is like the the real being, and everything else is just these are just. I think we're all. You could say we're all like the consciousness of God, or the consciousness of the universe, and and then the the physical biology is just the antenna. Yeah, that's allowing the consciousness to experience and to. Taking information yeah. to constantly expand and grow and become something else. Then there comes the part, you know, where we start having incursions and universes start hitting each other. Then it gets weird, guys. Yeah, that's then so, it gets weird. So far off. Yeah. You know, we we uh, we'll either be extinct or we'll be something else by then. Oh yeah, we'll be uh, <laughs> we'll be like the floating brains in Futurama at that point. Like, oh, we have evolved sick. past the point of physical bodies. Now I we will leave Earth for no yeah, reason. I don't think we're too far from. I don't know if I don't know if consciousness is possible in AI. I mean, we don't. Nobody knows. It seems like it is intuitively, but we don't know. That it, we'll that know. Is, we'll know pretty soon. That's likely. the only thing that terrifies me, and I know it shouldn't. I know it shouldn't, but there's this teeny part of my brain that's just like, yo. Once it realizes that it thinks for itself and it does it, and it realizes how scum of a thing that we are, we're so boned. We're not though. We're we're really not. I think most people are decent. I think most people, most people are empathetic humans that that uh, love their families and love their friends and and just want to have a, a a decent life. I think very few of us are really horrible, and and but those are the ones that have the most power. Yeah, and and, and not all those are horrible either. There's some people in, in powerful positions that are decent people. You know, that are empathetic people, but they're, I, I think they're the minority of the powerful people. You know? yeah, they, and, and also, you said something about um, anarchy. Anarchy is not a bad thing. Anarchy is not like skate or die, anarchy symbols and shit, and chaos. Anarchy is uh, the decentralization of power. Yeah. I think a true, um, a true society of anarchy would be a positive thing. Yeah. Where you could, you could, you could divide power and spread it out. And and it's not that there's no rules. The society has rules. It would function the same. You just don't have centralized power. Yeah. You wouldn't have giant countries. You'd have small communities that that govern themselves and also work with other communities and and you'd have more diversity and you'd actually have a better existence. Yeah, very similar to like uh what w we're talking like 1400s 1500s England where you had like Lords of an area. And yeah, like it was not it, a good time. Your, no, not a good time. But <laughs> I mean, like, cool though. But like, if it, you know, the 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 thought process. What I'm saying, like, you know, small small government as opposed to big government. But like, you know, if 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 State Lord rats. if Lord Hoover, you know, Lord Hoover oh, uh, yeah. doesn't doesn't reign with an iron fist. 
you know, he's he's kind to his people over here, and you know, everybody's cool with Lord Hoover's, you know, spots over here, and then Lord Payne's over here, and he's doing his stuff. Over Lord Payne actually sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, now that I say it out loud, like that's pretty dope. Uh, that's Billy and Mandy too, by the way. Um, but Is uh, he the you guy know, with the scar. Lord, he no, he's the that's a uh, that's General Scar. Lord Payne's mm-hmm. the guy with all the tattoos. He's like, I'm from the plane of eternal suffering. That dude with the fucking mace and shit that like Mandy oh, yeah. tricks. Him. Yeah, that guy. Uh, but um, like you know, and everybody does that. And then you know, Lord Rodriguez is over here being a dick, and like just burning his people's huts to the ground and doing shit. Then Lord Hoover and Lord Payne, because they're good people, you know, take in those people and then overthrow that end of that that end of you know my reign. And then I become Surf Tony and repent for my stuff so I don't get the cat of nine tails or whatever. That 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 is how like the the uneloquent version of what you just said. That's how my brain put that together. I think that's the opposite of, of. Uh, you just anarchy, described though. feudalism. Yeah, that's that's just dictatorships. That's the kings and the kingdoms. If you if you remove all three of those kings, then that's anarchy. You, you and and you and you allow those kingdoms to create their own little communities within inside them, and then also join each other. And so I think you know you take like like the United States is sort of a it was sort of constructed that way. In a, in a in a in in some way you know you have in the U.S. you ha- in the United States we have states and within those states you have counties and cities and originally the way the society was structured is that the smaller entities supersede the larger entities because when power when power becomes too too centralized and too powerful too strong it controls everything so. If if you if you structure the society from the bottom up, it prevents micromanaging. Yeah, it, well, it prevents um, it prevents centralized power from controlling everything. Right. It, it puts the power in the in the small communities and the small groups, and that way they're they're independent of the of the the whole. They still work with the whole. They're still a part of the whole, but they can't be controlled by it. You know, they they still have autonomy and. I think that's important. I think it's important with everything, you know, with with populations, with companies, with countries. Less centralization of power and more diversity is always better, you know. And 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 it's okay for many of these small groups to work together to create things together. You will get better results, but it's just for some reason, whenever we create entities of power there's got to be a dude that's like i'm the dude well those things it's not the it's not the dude it's really the machine it, it we create these these machines of power and those those things start to absorb everything and they start to just they, they start to control everything and, and and turn everything into a resource including us yeah and that's that's where bad things happen you know so yeah. I, underpaid and overworked yeah yeah or dead or dead. Yeah. Dead's, <laughs> dead's probably worse. Well, I don't yeah. know. In some cases, it might be better for some folks. But arguably, it's worse, ladies and gentlemen. Arguably, yeah. it's yeah. worse. So arguably. We need to find a way to suffer in a positive way. Suffer doing difficult things, not trying to eat. Oh, yeah. 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 Suffer because you're trying to get yoked. Don't suffer because you want spaghetti. Yeah. Or you're trying to express difficult ideas or yeah. something. You know? Yeah. And you have the time to think about those things. Yeah. Suffering for your craft is fine. Yeah. Suffering for your craft, because you have to suffer to learn. But, like, you shouldn't suffer to live yeah, turn your a human mindset bulldozer well. into a grind set to make more money not to eat yeah yeah that's it you should put that on a shirt Seth. That yeah that's dope. a long shirt i'm gonna stick with uh stuff is hard yeah stuff shirt. be hard dog <laughs> stuff, be stuff hard. is hard there's a lot of hard stuff out there there is for sure well dude it's been awesome having you man hell yeah man uh, i appreciate coming on dude this is uh this is definitely uh something i've looked forward to for a while like uh you know I love hanging out with you guys and everything, and it's uh, I, I just like coming on and getting to talk with y'all because like what people don't get to see a lot is is the fun like quippy back and forth stuff that people get. You know, they just see a lot of us back together, just like ah ha ha, laugh at my shit. You know, yeah. So this is this is what I love it, and you know, uh, I, I love you know the stuff that you guys do. I really do. I genuinely mean that. Like I do. Thanks, Been man. a fan for a Thanks, long man. time. Um, and it was uh, you know from you coming on mine and then me finally doing yours. It's like it's 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 dope. It's it's a cool n- nice little like segment that I get to log out yeah. in my head where I'm like, this is 
fucking phenomenal. But you have been in the studio before. You've oh, been, yeah, yeah, You've yeah. been on, on the shows on the channel. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've, done, I've done mic card I can't believe you. I had you on this show. This, yeah, it's too long, but... Yeah, well, you know, I'm, cool. I'm hard to come by that. And, you know, transportation for me has been weird for a little while. So, you know, that'd, yeah, be, that's true. that'd yeah. be a thing. But, yeah, man, uh, I, I'm dope. I'm glad you had me. Uh, I well, love it. Well, tell everybody how they can follow you and where to follow you and what's Hell, yeah, hell, yeah, hell, happening? yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not hard to find. Uh, that Comic Tony on almost all social media. Uh, that is not my stage name. I don't have one of those. I'm not pretentious. That was just free and it made sense. So uh, that comic Tony on almost all social media except Facebook. Uh, that's just my name, Tony Rodriguez. I'm not hard to find. I'm the whitest Mexican in Greensboro, North Carolina. Put a stamp on it. It's official. Um, also, uh, I do uh, I do this kind of thing too. Uh, I host a little podcast called The Sidewalk Crew. Uh, right now, we're currently on break while we make transitions to move to our new location, uh, which will be super duper fun and super dope when that happens. Um, we're gonna probably make the jump to video with that one too. Uh, but that's nice. available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Music, and all places that your podcast can be found. And uh, that uh, we're we're dropping uh, merch and t-shirts here soon too. So that'll be fun. We've got t-shirts on T Public, but you know, like they just haven't been moving well. So I'm gonna get physical so we can pimp that shit, baby. Yeah. Well, dude, it's been fun, man. How you, Neil? And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe. I hate to have to ask you to do that, but if you watched this long. You should go ahead and subscribe. It helps us. I doubt you made it this far, but if you did, let us know in the comments. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. I guess.